welcome back to the Mindful Belly Don't Eat Your Feelings podcast. I'm your host, Ellie Rome, and this is episode 20. 20 episodes, you guys. I'm psyched. And this episode in particular is one of my favorites. So I got to interview Sean Jewell, who is the co-owner and chief chocolate officer of Coracao Chocolate and Kokoko Drinking Chocolates. And I, two years ago, was blessed to discover Coracao Confections at Paleo FX, and my world forever changed because this is by far the best chocolate that I've ever had. And they've got this chocolate almond butter bar and a chocolate fudge filled bar and just so many amazing candies. And they're not like conventional candies that are filled with corn syrup and GMOs and refined sugar and tons of preservatives or artificial ingredients. These bars and candies are 100% certified organic. They're minimally processed, completely gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo-friendly, soy-free, peanut-free. There's no artificial sweeteners and they're sweetened with coconut sugar, which is lower glycemic and is just all around a far, far superior chocolate. And in this episode, Sean not only shares with us why not all chocolate is created equal, but we dive into his recent experience living amongst the Panch- Pachamama tribe. I think I'm saying that right. In, in the Amazon. And he shares with us some really powerful takeaways from that he gained living amongst this indo- indigenous culture and really beautiful wisdom around how we look at food and fuel our bodies. So I invite you to honestly get a piece of paper, pull a notebook out because he shares some really, really powerful insights. And I, I listen to the episode like five times and I feel like I get more and more out each time. So really excited for you to hear it. And before we dive in, he offered us a promo code. So if you want to order some chocolate, 15% off of your entire order. Go to coracalconfections.com. Use the promo code mindfulchocolate, all one word, all caps. And I promise you, you will not feel or you will not be disappointed. And get some for Halloween's coming up. Have these in your drawer at work so you're not reaching for the sugar-filled not good candy (laughs) and eat this instead. Yeah. Anyways, okay, let's dive in. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Good, good, good. Yeah, I'm psyched to have you on here. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and what your amazing product is? Um, yeah, my name's Sean Jewell. Um, I'm co-owner of Coracao Confections and our recent acquisition, uh, Drink Kokoko, or Kokoko Drinking Chocolate. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we just bought... Um, a uh, hot cocoa company that sort of like falls fell in line enough with our values that we uh we felt like it was a good idea once the business was up for sale but um but yeah and uh so i've been um i've been with the company about six years no seven years it was founded 10 years ago um by my business partner daniel and uh, his previous business partner matthew um yeah, they got their start at Cafe Gratitude, like um, as like the head dessert chefs for um, for that uh, that chain of restaurants. And anyone who's not familiar with Cafe Gratitude, the most important part is that it was like, you know, at the time it was the uh, kind of it was a uh, unparalleled in like like healthy, sustainable food that was also like incredibly delicious. And it was kind of like the, probably the first restaurant chain to really focus on having like all three of those all three of those things um, in line. And so Coracao is just very much like rooted in that same sort of philosophy that um, Matthew and Daniel kind of learned there that like you don't have to sacrifice any one of those three aspects, like sustainability, like health, the healthfulness of the food you're creating and also the fact that it can be delicious. Um, but yeah, I, I moved up. Uh, I moved up here in about 2013. Ran into Daniel at a farmers market. Got involved with the company, and yeah, more and more involved over time. Rest is history. Wow. Yeah. And so, how did you? I guess you met at the farmers market. How did you? Did they already had? They already had started. I guess Coracao or. Yeah, they Coracao been going for about four years. It was you know probably about 10 percent as big as it is now, um, but. Uh, and um yeah it's uh back then it was more just like just farmers markets and a small amount of like in in stores but you know 
kind of the, uh, the market started kind of reflecting the chocolate we were making, you know, in terms of like, there's like more of a demand for, you know, like, uh, sustainable chocolate, uh, chocolate with, uh, alternative sweeteners that, um, you know, are healthier than conventional stuff, more like also just like minimally processed chocolate, ch chocolate without soy lecithins or emulsifiers mm -hmm. and chocolate using like, uh, cacao from sustainable sources that are using fair labor practices. So all those kind of combined and all those kind of, all those customers kind of come to the same place and where we're at. Our company's also like 100% vegan. Um, we don't like scream it to the wind, but like, you know, we find that vegans will find the vegan companies. So yeah, so we definitely, yeah, we definitely have a lot of vegan customers as well. No, this is huge. And I, I had your chocolate the first time at Paleo FX. Were you, oh, cool. you might have been there. Yeah, yeah, I was. It was definitely me there. Okay, well, I was the one that probably circled back like thirteen times to eat. Yeah. Your first. Yeah, yeah. That, that that can happen on those three day events. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. So it was so exciting to see just like the the ingredients. So if you can dive in a little deeper, just to let the listeners know like what is so special you mentioned a lot of it already but just like what is mm -hmm. so special about the ingredients yeah well i think like the most like i mean the most special in like my opinion would be like the the cacao we're using to create our chocolate like um, we're working with cacao that's from like just some of the finest like parts of the world in terms of like production where's that and um sorry i just confused myself a little bit I guess finest like finest cacaos in the world in the sense that we're using like heirloom varietals of cacao. So like like varietals of the actual cacao plant that are minimally altered from the ones that like were first kind of cultivated 3000 years ago um, or so. And um, so the flavor is like these, these cacaos have been bred for flavor rather than like disease robustness or yield size or things like that, like other conventional cacaos and things like when you're developing cacaos for, you know, to protect them against diseases or to make them, um, make them able to grow in climates and soils and sunlights that they don't normally want to grow in, you have to sacrifice flavor. But uh, our cacao is grown, like shade grown in, in farms that resemble more of like a rainforest than a farm. And um, the result is cacao that just tastes amazing. And, um, and also it's a, you know, it's a cacao that people can feel good about eating because it's literally like a net positive farming practice where you're actually, the farmers are using the cacao to reforest parts of the rainforest and um with an indigenous plant so it's um so it's you know it's kind of unparalleled in the food industry to have a food that's you know giving back more than it's taking out um and uh yeah our our customers jive with that absolutely and what about i guess comparing like so that to like a conventional bar you'd find on mm -hmm. the shelves as far as like yeah. organic and like molds and toxins like yeah chocolates. well i've had um like you know i've you know i've spent um yeah i spent a lot of time in uh, ecuador looking at our farms and like you know seeing our farmers their practices and what they're doing and also the processing places where our cacao is being fermented and dried and occasionally roasted and um and then i've also seen like kind of the cacao farms in parts of in parts of where i've been where like the where could you know, just uh, conventional, conventional, the way conventional cacao is produced and the practices are like, it's really gross, you know, and like, um, like I'll, I'll see the difference of like the difference between like a healthy cacao pod and a cacao pod that has some of the diseases that cacao is susceptible to, you know, and like a healthy cacao pod has this like white, this like white bright fruit around these bright purple cacao beans versus like an unhealthy one is just like, just this, just, you know, dirty like disheveled brown look to the beans and they're kind of like half fermenting or like just rotting away in the pod and like in the conventional companies like they'll just throw those beans in with the, the rest of the the rest of the lot rather than throw the rather than throw that throw those beans away 
or let that tree get healthier from the disease by not farming it at all for a couple of years and just letting it kind of recover. So, uh, so those throws could throw them right in. And I've seen beans that um, conventional growers are, gr are drying rather than drying them on like drying racks raised above the ground with like shade from the rain so they don't mold. Um, if they get too wet, they're just drying them right on the side of the road or, or on the road itself. And, you know, you literally drive around them because the farmers will use part of the, the you know, the government road to dry their cacao beans for the day. And, you know, just bur there's just chickens and dogs like running around, <laughs> and, you know, so, yeah, so it's like, so, you know, they're just, and they just scoop these beans off the road with all the gravel, dirt, exhaust, chicken feathers, and whatever the heck else is there. And, you know, they throw all that into the pile and that, that all gets blended into that chocolate if it doesn't get, you know, filtered or picked out somewhere along the way. But even if the large chunks are filtered and picked out, all the particulates and stuff, it's just, yeah, it's, um, it's not like, it's like, uh, you know, most, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that the industry wants people to see. So it's, you know, that's why these, it's really, it's, you have to, you have to travel pretty far to be able to peek under the hood in that way. And, you know, and it's a reason that like, you know, chocolate is like a really like, mysterious and like a like amazing looking plant and the ways that you make chocolate like by fermenting it sun drying it it's really like beautiful in like practice it's sort of what not what people imagine when they're eating chocolate and the reason like big conventional chocolate companies like don't capitalize on that cool story or that marketing is because their story is just gross they don't want anyone to see it you yeah know? but but when we're telling our story like we can we can show you kind of just like the you know the uh just the kind of the things that make the cacao plant amazing because we're not, you know, we're not ashamed of any part of the production process. That was incredible. And yeah. so like what you mentioned that you just went on a five week trip to Ecuador. So that's what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it. Um, the second half of my trip, I was like uh, looking at farms and some of the people we source from um, in the Esmeraldas region of Ecuador from this uh, collective, um, collective of 450 farms called Echo Cacao because that's another thing a lot of these farms are just one to one to three people like maintaining just you know like you know three to three to six acres of like farmlands and just selling what they uh, their yields from that small farmland to a collective so you have like you know these like yeah these very small little manageable farms and um and so yeah so I was hung out with a like uh, two, two of those farmers more than uh, any of the other ones in that region saw their land, you know, kind of saw what they were doing to uh, kind of uh, maintain, mitigate, and kind of counteract some of the diseases that just kind of affect cacao. And um, yeah, and they're doing, they're doing a great job. They're doing, you know, they're going about it like both intuitively, but also scientifically, not forgetting kind of the old wisdom, but also using the tools of like, modern times to kind of make you know just protect their uh, protect their crops and um yeah the first and then the first half of the uh the trip in ecuador i actually spent some time with uh friends at the Pancha Mama alliance like visiting some of the more like far-flung communities in uh near the ecuador peru border and just seeing some of the ecotourism projects they're working on there with um these uh tribes of people called the Oshwar that are using ecotourism to uh to protect their lands from oil and mining um, companies that are trying to, you know, commission the government to let them come into that land and, you know, take some of the resources out. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. And so but what, is, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no you go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and I just want to, you know, plug the Ponche Mom Alliance for the good work they're doing in that regard. Yeah, no, I'm so interested in that. So what, like, what was that? And like, you went over there planning to go see that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went over there because we've worked with the Pancha Mama Alliance on just on some charities and like some some charity drives. And so, we've, and uh, but uh, yeah, so it's been on my to do list for a long time to kind of see some of the peoples they're working with. And because uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so um, we flew. It's uh, it's pretty hard to get there. Like um, to get to the first community, I had to drive drive eight hours from Quito to a small town called Puyo take a two seater Cessna like little like puddle jumper plane to a dirt runway in the middle of the rainforest and then hour hike to a canoe 
two hour canoe ride and then another hour hike and then we're at that community so it's uh yeah so it's pretty like you know, these it's people living um you know i don't think there's really much many untouched people left but as one of the more minimally touched peoples in the world by like in terms of like when you talk about like technology and western civilizations ubiquitous presence but uh yeah and it was amazing were they how were you received uh very well like um you know there's like it's um you know i think they uh, they recognize that like you know that like a reality of the modern world is that like you know it's 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 coming at us all you know and uh, there's really not there's no like you know there's really there's the kind of you know a, yeah it's a sad reality there's no one that's really exempt from the world kind of growing in to like you know in terms of technology and things finding people you know in terms of and um so yeah, so they're they're trying to mitigate that as best they can by like, you know, creating an ecotourism project and like, you know, instead of like having to deal with like selling their resources or their land or because they technically don't own the land they're on. They've just always been there, you know, they, but they haven't been there under these terms of like Western terms of land ownership. They're just like, it's more of a stewardship thing where they yeah, it's like, hey, we've, we've just always been here. Like, I don't really know what ownership means, but. I mean, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So it's 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 difficult for for them to kind of argue for their rights because you know, you know, different organizations have different definitions of land ownership in terms of their own government or the corporations that might come in to mine or drill for oil, and um, but uh, but ecotourism gives them more of a livelihood. It gives more people a view of that land and creates some more like, you know, ambassadors around the world to help protect them and also gives them some, some money. So the young people of those communities, you know, can buy the things they want to buy and don't, you know, don't feel compelled to, to work with uh, people with more, you know, insidious motives. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's like, it's, 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 you know, it's a happy story and a sad story because it's like people whose lives are being forced to change, but they're trying to change it in the wisest way they feel possible. And uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I was just there very much as like a, just a guest, like I've got nothing, to sh you know, I've got, I've got no agenda. Just show me what you feel like you want to show me. Let me know what you feel like you want to let me know and I'll pass on the message. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What were your biggest and, like learnings and takeaways? from them um yeah well, I think like one of the things is just like kind of living like quietly and slowly is just like a lot of the stuff like it's you know they're like cliches when you come back like it's just like nature is really great and you know a simple diet is kind of nice and you know it's just like and like why all the work why not just like lie in a hammock for an hour you know kind of like yeah. and uh, it's just a, yeah it's just all this like it's just a very like slow pace of life and you just see how like you know how how happiness isn't really contingent upon much other than you know just like good food and good family you know and and uh and then yeah and then also just um just the uh the amount that you can do with just plants alone like like what you can build like you know and just how quick yeah like you know those the people they're like, you know, they can go into the jungle and they can just kind of fashion whatever they need, whatever they need. You know, if they, you know, if they go into the jungle and they, you know, they're able to kill like a, like a, a tapir, which is kind of like a, like a kind of like a jungle boar or anything like that. You know, they don't bring like a bag to carry it back. They just make one in like five minutes from a freaking palm frond. It's amazing. You know, wow. they need a, if they need a piece of rope or a piece of cord, they make it, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what's sort of amazing about the the rainforest and people live. It's just, just such abundance. You know, there's just so much food and so much plant matter and so much energy there that, that um, you know, you can see why these people kind of remain there for so long. It's just like, there's no, you know, there's, there's just like, there's more than they know what to do with, you know, like in terms of like, yeah, it's food. Like you really don't have to work very hard because, you know, it's just like, there's just, yeah, there's just fruit and animals and just like, oh, just, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah it's an amazing way of life it makes you or it made me want to like yeah definitely quiet my life here back in the city you know 
one of the first things I would have done was I actually canceled my home internet. So I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, it's like there's a cafe down the street. I'm at work eight hours a day. Like, do I really need internet 24 hours? You know? Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, yeah, and it's, it's really cool. It's also like, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's just interesting to know how the world, how, what the, what the future holds for these type of people and how they want to navigate, like, you know, like, you know, more and more Westerners like coming into their, their territory and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, they're, um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was an amazing trip. It sounds like it. I thank you so much for sharing all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how'd you get involved with them? Um, yeah, like I said, we'd, uh, we'd done some donation drives for the Ponche Mama Alliance. And one of the things the Ponche Mama Alliance does is organize these really amazing and unique in all the world, uh, like eco tours trips to, uh, to these places where you get to like, you know, you get to meet these, uh, you get to meet these people and get like a window into their way of life for, for, you know, a couple of, a couple of weeks. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it's a really, it's like, it's a really like unique and amazing travel experience that like, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I hadn't, I hadn't, I mean, I knew, I knew kind of what I was going to do, but I didn't, I didn't really think, I thought it would be more like, you know, like, yeah, it'll probably be pretty curated, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, but it was, yeah, it was very authentic. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Their food is still like really, really delicious, super simple, but so good. And, um, and just like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you read about all all those like you know fermented foods are important and you know you just and all these like different like types of like you know ancestral health type of diet tips but to just see people like living with them who just like yeah we don't know why this is important we've just always done it and we're pretty healthy you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah right they didn't, they didn't read a book about why fermented foods are good they just eat a lot of fermented food you uh-huh. know and it's uh, yeah and you know they don't have a ton of spices or anything like that. it's just like chili and just yeah just like you know steaming like steaming fish and parts of palm and some yucca and some banana leaf and then like chili on top of that and you know just eat that five days a week and it's really good i mean they 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 appreciate any like you know western world snacks you might bring them but it's uh <laughs> it's funny actually i brought them a chocolate bar and i was gonna uh, ask if you brought them yeah any- i brought them an 80 81 percent dark chocolate bar which is kind of like our standard blend and uh the opinions were mixed for sure they were like they're like oh this is a uh, yeah this is this is interesting and it reminds you it's like it is you know it's like an acquired taste food like dark chocolate but yeah it's sort of funny because they were actually growing cacao like on their farm or they're like little the farm plots they have there but they grow it more for the white the white pulpy fruit that's this really bright sour fruit that like okay. grows around the beans and so you kind of like swoosh the beans around in your mouth and um, you just spit the bean out once the fruit's gone. And um, so they were growing it just for that, which, uh, which is, is uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was fun to like see them growing some of the world's greatest chocolate in terms of like heirloom varietals of chocolate and then just throwing all the beans on the ground. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but, um, but yeah, this, this, they, uh, yeah, they didn't hate the chocolate, but it's, it'd, be, <laughs> it'd be a stretch to say they liked it. But, um, but I had the same sort of experience with uh, their favorite food, which is this beverage called chicha, which is um, made from a uh, fermented yucca root. And so the, uh, they boil yucca root and then women just kind of gather around a pot and take big bites of this boiled yucca root, chew it, um, spit it into the pot, and then let that ferment from anywhere from like 24 to 72 hours. And the more you let it ferment, the more alcoholic it gets. So like the 24, the 24 hour brew is like the kids brew. And then like the 72 hour brew is like the, uh, the adult brew. And, uh, and they just sip this all day. Like they're just like, just quietly sipping away. Like I, like for the most part, they don't drink water. They just drink chicha and, uh, <laughs> and, and eat a diet that has like a lot of fruit and a lot of like watery substances. So it's kind of funny to like be with a group of people like, you know, you hear like, you know, in, in you know in the western world you hear important to drink water and everyone stay hydrated everyone's trying to stay more hydrated and these people just don't drink any water at all <laughs> and um yeah just drink lots of fermented. it and it, it kind of grew on me too i drank i drank uh i drank a fair deal of it it kind of tastes like a uh, a room temperature porridgey kombucha which okay. does not sound, 
which sounds, you know, <laughs> yeah, at first so it, it, it tasted about as awful as that sounds, but you know, like anything that's sort of like weird in flavor, it's like, it's awful until it kind of grows on you. For sure. Yeah. And you can see the wisdom in it. It's just like this incredible, like I could tell it was like one of the most like probiotic rich foods I'd ever tasted in my entire life just by the flavor. And um, so, you know, to be in the jungle, like, you know, eating all this, you know, just being not good in yourself with like, you know, this like huge, like bursts of like probiotics all the time. It's got to be amazing for their guts. Oh, I bet. Yeah, because I mean, they can, you know, they can digest pretty much, pretty much anything. It seems like. I've, I've, oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and did you, um, I guess for anyone that's interested in like this ecotourism and like the, this tribe specifically, is there a way to mm -hmm. find them? Um, yeah. Panchamama.com or panchamamalliance.com and then go to their like journeys page. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, you can sign up. They do like four or five of these trips a year. And um, I think they're around um, like, like 3000 to $3,500. But it's like, you know, it's a two week trip and it's yeah. like, you know, for, for what you're getting, it's a bargain. You know, it's like, yeah, the, like the amount of like, I don't know. Cause when I travel, it's like, I always try to like get to the authentic heart of a place really quick. You know, it's like, I don't want to like, you know, go on the, the tourist, the, the, the well-tread tourist path, you know, like I want to like, you know, I want to be in it. And I, that was, this was a great, great way to just be in it. That's yeah. So awesome. Thank you for sharing this. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, I guess we can go back to the to yeah, y'all's chocolate. To, yeah, it's chocolate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. um yeah, and it all connects back to that because, like, like I said, like our farms are like the like our farms are like helping protect these same like landscapes and uh, you know the same like these the same way of life in the sense that we're you know giving money back to the country of Ecuador and allowing it to like receive you know receive income for something that's protecting its resources rather than bleeding them dry you know yeah. and so it's so it's yeah so it's all you know it's like it's, you know you know people hear that like vote with your dollars all the time but it's like it's, you know for all it's like for it, lest it become too cliche it's it's very true like yeah like you know it's um so yeah so like purchasing our chocolate or any chocolate that's like working with um you know good farming collectives in ecuador or other parts of the world is just really a, a great way to just like you know you know get you know rather than just donating money just get something delicious or something that is like you know also incredible like doing an incredible like amount of support for for both people and nature and the planet yeah Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're sharing that too. Thank you. Yeah. And for even for y'all's chocolate, as far as the the processing, like how do you how do you make mm -hmm. chocolate? Like, can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like, there's different ways. Different companies go about it in different ways. Like, um, we source cacao paste, also called cacao mass or cacao liqueur. We don't like to use the term cacao liqueur because people get confused with like or thinking it actually has some sort of alcohol content. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, cacao paste is basically. Uh, I mean, a lot of people who know about cacao nibs now. You know, you see those places. Yeah. A cacao nib is basically just bust like a bean kind of crushed up. So if, like it's almost like a slivered almond version of a cacao bean. Um, so when you grind those nibs down, you get paste, which is just this. Uh, block of the like cacao fibers suspended in a matrix of cacao butter which is the oil and fat cacao is about um like a like a block of cacao paste or a cacao bean is about 70 or like 60 to 80 percent oil or fat and then the rest is like the fibers so we get sourced that cacao paste or uh yeah um in blocks or chips or something like that and then we re-grind that paste with coconut sugar, salt, and vanilla. That's our standard blend. Um, sort of like a bean to bar chocolate company would get beans and then refine those beans into nibs and then grind those nibs into paste and then add usually just sugar mm. or, um, or like a sweetener. That's kind of the, uh, like, uh, the cacao aficionados like bean to bar chocolate bar wants you to taste just that cacao. So what they're going to do is only add sugar because sugar, 
lends the least amount of like other flavors as long with sweetness. And, um, and I don't think like when you're making a dark chocolate bar, adding a little sugar to make it palpable is like, you know, it's not um, as long if you're eating above 75%, it's still a pretty amazing food to be eating. And, um, but yeah, but we use, we use coconut sugar because, you know, we've always felt like from the start, Daniel and Matthew and, um, and then me as well. I also worked at a, like a kind of a, a high end, like health foods cafe, like just like, you know, notice the, like the different feel of coconut sugar in the body. There's just like, it's just a more like rounded level headed feeling after eating it. You don't get like this, like jittery feeling and there's not like kind of like this weird kind of food crash afterwards and stuff and like these like I don't know I think these kind of these feelings come with being sort of a more intuitive eater you know where it's like you just kind of notice the very subtleties of how foods act in your body mm -hmm. overall and I just like you would I would notice that like like um like a bar with cane sugar would give me a little bit more of like an edge than a bar with coconut sugar and I'd also feel like kind of less less satiated you know um but yeah and um and it makes sense because coconut sugar has sort of a trace fiber content in the actual sweetener itself which is what lowers the glycemic index of it. um so so when people like low glycemic coconut sugar it's because it literally has a fiber in the same way the fruit will have like a fiber and um so yeah so we use coconut sugar we grind that up and then we take that chocolate that we make um and we either pour that into bars or pour use it as like a coating for our other like more kind of candy-esque confections. And I think that's what we're most known for is our more like candy style items. Um, because, you know, that's what people like, you know, our whole like our other shtick was just like we want to just create kind of like classic American candies and chocolates. You know, so we have something that's like a Snickers bar, something that's like a Reese's, you know, something that's like kind of like a Rolo. And um, and like something like a peppermint patty, and yeah, and people people just resonate with that because you yeah, know, I think there's a there's a nostalgia effect, but I think something that a lot of people who like kind of grow up and become healthier eaters notice they have a nostalgia for like certain foods they have when they were a kid, but if you actually go back and try those foods you had nostalgia for, they're pretty they don't live <laughs> up to like your memory of them. You have them like you have this like gilded you have this like gilded memory of them that isn't actually authentic. So we're trying to kind of create like a version of that that like captures the nostalgia, but also like you know reflects a more like re like refined adult palate in a sense where like people don't just yeah you know and um, yeah, and people like it's people people really resonate with it. Our top seller is the Berkeley bar, which is like a Snickers, you know, which is like you know which is the top selling candy bar in America. So. It, it would make sense that it's our top selling candy bar too, you know? And, you know, and I think it's just, uh, it's because it's kind of got like sweets and it's got a little bit of a salty edge. Um, and then it's got like that crunchy texture, which like salty, crunchy, sweet is sort of a classic combination. For and, sure. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got, you know, we've got like a bunch of products we sell in stores around America that are a little more packaged to wholesale or like packaged for like store sales, like little two packs of Snickers bars or almond butter bars. We call the Snickers bars, Berkeley bars. Um, and then, um, and then our website has like a lot of different options and offerings in terms of like, like building your own like custom candy box of truffles or like different bars, um, kind of like unique one-off items, like spicy stuff or things like that. And then, um, and then now um, a line of uh, drinking chocolates which are a little bit different than a hot cocoa. A drinking chocolate is more like a, more kind of inspired by the original styles of drinking chocolate that like the, you know, Mesoamerican, Central America, and like, you know, Northern, Northern South America were like originally drinking, you know, pre, pre, uh, pre Columbus, pre Columbus contact. And, um, and so it's like a thicker kind of fattier beverage kind of, um, than like a thinner like hot cocoa and it's a uh, yeah it's a really rich nice experience to drink that type of cocoa nice and is it is that pretty yeah. low sugar too or is there um yeah like um i think the lowest uh we have like it the rate the blends range from 60 percent to 100 percent okay and they're still they're all still coconut sugar sweetened and um yeah and then they have different different types of spices too like some some and then some are just pure chocolate 
So yeah, so they, they're all, they range, run the range from low sweetened to absolutely unsweetened, so. Oh yeah, I'm excited to try these. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and for, as far as like your favorite, what's your favorite product that you all sell? Um, the almond butter bar. I agree. Any, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super, super good. I think it's like, I don't really have a, I mean, I have a sweet tooth, but I have a, like, I think I have more of a fat tooth than a sweet tooth. And the almond butter bar, like, is just like, just so luscious in terms of like the consistency of the filling and uh, the richness of it. And I think the almonds, you know, are like, almonds are like a California food. So I feel like it's kind of like, I don't know, it feels like, it feels nice to be eating like kind of a part of home as well. Um, but uh but yeah the almond butter bar is my favorite for sure nice and even just to backtrack a little bit um yeah like for your, sure your journey to get you met at the farmer's market but what was your what intrigued you about being part of this company um i um well after after uh, i mean i became a vegetarian in college for sort of like ecology reasons and um you know like you know, living with like kind of like activists, activist types in college. And that was just sort of an activist diet at the time. And, um, and then I traveled after college to Southeast Asia and sort of like continue being a vegetarian. Um, and, but kind of more for like for health reasons and just started to explore and kind of question like, what really is food? And like, like, like really kind of for the first time resonating with like the, you are what you eat, the reality of that statement, like that, what else would you be? I mean, the water you drink and the air you breathe, like your body is built out of the things you're like creating. And so it's like, oh, well, I want to be built out of good things, you know? So, so I started to really think about like, not only just being a vegetarian, some blanket rule, but more just like, well, what vegetables are you eating as a vegetarian? You know, like, like what, what things like, you know, what things that are vegetarian that I shouldn't be eating and stuff. But yeah, so just like really like taking a deep, a long, deep dive into, um, into like the nature of food itself and then um yeah and then i started working when i got back from asia i started working um at a cafe called peace pies that was a raw vegan cafe and so i played with the raw vegan diet for a while which um my resulting like conclusion was that on a personal level raw vegan diet's like great for like a couple weeks as a cleanse bad for a lifestyle <laughs> and um but yeah, and then once I moved to the Bay Area and started working at farmers markets and working with Coracao, I kind of returned to a more like omnivorous diet as I started to see like, you know, farms and farmers that were, you know, raising animals in ways that I could find no disagreement with, you know, like, I'm like, because I was like, you know, like, it's just like, I feel like animals, you know, like cows, pigs and chickens have sort of entered into a contractual agreement with human beings in the sense that like, um, you know, it's like, you protect me from the horrible death that would await me in nature. Um, and in exchange, I get, you know, food and shelter and I die a little bit earlier. And, and uh, yeah, and I feel like factory farming is us just cheating on our end of that bargain. But, um, but these farmers, yeah, like, I just like, I could find no disagreement with uh, the way they were farming. So, so I like, you know, kind of started eating animal products again. And uh yeah, and so now I just kind of like, you know, have a diet that's just like, you know, you know, minimally processed, unprocessed foods. And, you know, I don't really have anything, not really anything's off the table. Like, you know, if, if you're going to bake the world's best bread, I'll, I'll try it, you know. And um, yeah, and like Coracao kind of follows the same philosophy in terms of just like, you know, minimally processed sweeteners, minimally processed ingredients, you know, you know, sustainable organic ingredients, you know. And, um, you know, stuff that like we want our bodies to be built of, you know, if like, if we wouldn't eat it, we wouldn't make it, you know, and if we wouldn't feed it to our families, we wouldn't make it. So, so, so that's what, yeah. So that's, that's behind everyone, every one of our products. we make. I love that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. I love that the perspective of like, just that basic, like we are what we eat and bringing yeah. it down to that simple as that consciousness when you ever you mm -hmm. take part of something. Yeah. That's yeah, and it's like, so it's like, so I feel like the, it takes about, I think, seven years for your body to completely turn over cellularly. So if you've been eating kind of clean for seven years, you can just kind of like take pride in the fact that your body is like <laughs> completely made of good stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. such a good thing to yeah. 
appreciate it. I, cal I calculated it recently. I, if like if that cellular, based on cellular turnover rate and the amount of chocolate I eat per day, I'm about 7% cacao. <laughs> like in terms of like a human being. Yeah. That's amazing. Actually, How do you feel? Yeah. Um, feel pretty great. Yeah. Like I keep waiting to get sick of chocolate, but it just like doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. can't imagine getting sick yeah. of chocolate. Yeah. It's, um, it's not, it's not a reality that has happened to me yet. <laughs> well, so where can people find these bars? Um, best place, uh, coracowchocolate.com. Um, and then, um, you know, we're also at Cow Chocolate on Instagram if you want to follow us there. And um, I, did make a, I did make a promo for, for listeners okay. of this show. Um, when's, uh, when's, this, uh, when's this show going to be going up? Probably next week. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so the, the code is just Mindful Chocolate, and it's good for 50% off your entire order. Thank you so much. That's huge. Yeah. And then if you want to find us in stores in your neighborhood, there's a great list on our website of like all the stores we're at. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I'll put that all in the show notes so people will have the links cool. and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My, mindful chocolate, all caps. Mindful chocolate, all caps. And then is there last question? If you could yeah, share, sure. yeah. If you could share three pieces of advice for the listeners on just things that they could do like today to improve their health or well-being, what would it be? Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, like, I don't know how well I'm placed to, like, advise anybody. But, uh, yeah, but, sure. um, but, you know, stuff that's helped me is, like, you know, just, um, I mean, I really like Michael Pollan's rule. Like, if, if, uh, if someone's great-grandma wouldn't recognize it, you probably shouldn't need it. Yeah. Like, you know, not just your great grandma, because my great grandma didn't know what hearts of palm were, but doesn't mean it's not a bad thing. But <laughs> just anybody's great grandma. But um, um, and then um, I don't know. I think a second one that's just good enough for two is like just like you know every moment's a new moment to start over. Like if you eat something, don't feel any shame. Just like make that a new moment, and you don't have to think like, well, tomorrow I'll get started on that diet or anything. Just, just do it right now, you know, and or do it in ten minutes, or do it right now and fuck up tomorrow and start over. Yeah. You know, it's just like every moment, like every moment is like day one. Every moment is moment one, you know, just forgive yourself for whatever decision you made and just soldier on. Yeah. There's no need to, yeah. You don't need to think about like, Oh, like how far, like how I'm so deep down or I've done so much already towards or like, it's so daunting to do it. Just like, I don't know, just every, every decision. Yeah. Just, just take a moment by moment, you know? Yes. Like, yeah. You don't like, you know, it's like, like we have these fires going on in the Amazon right now and they have a lot of people talking about diet because a lot of these fires are made like our humans like clearing clearing land for you know Brazilian beef and you know and you see a lot of people saying like this is why you should go vegan or something like that and it's like eh, just don't buy Brazilian beef you know like not even don't buy beef just don't buy Brazilian beef it's like it's it doesn't have to be like yeah small step like what what we need is like we don't need every American eating a perfect diet. We need like, you know, we need like, or you'll go right now. We have like 1% of Americans trying to eat like a perfect diet. What we need is like 50% of Americans just trying to take one small step. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, like if everyone in the country just stopped drinking soda, that would do way more for the economy, changing the economy, changing the health of our nation than 5% of people going completely vegan. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, so it's like, so small steps, the small steps are what's important. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. Do you have anything uh, else, anything else to share? No, no. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a platform. Absolutely. Thanks. I appreciate you mm -hmm. so much for coming on here. It was so fun to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. It was great talking to you too. Well, um, have a great rest of your day and I will. Uh -huh. be in touch. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>